China's trade policy is a problem. It's a problem for everybody. Um, China pursues a mercantilist trade policy. It keeps its uh, currency artificially low, and there, you know, the, there's a there are several efforts underway to deal with that. How that's going to be resolved, I don't know. It's actually not good for China because, uh, and and it is a little odd that one of the, that a country with hundreds of millions of poor people should be, in effect, subsidizing the consumption of one of the richest countries in the world, namely the United States. Uh, all the money that they're lending us could certainly be used for Chinese people to buy things. It's not as if all Chinese are rich and don't, uh, don't need anything. Um, but that, you know, that is an important international economic problem now. It's important to remember, I think, that um, Although China is the world's largest, one of the world's largest exporters, it's a, it's, a, it's a big manufacturing company. In fact, it's not exactly a manufacturing company. It's, it's an assembly plant. It's a packaging company. Uh, for all these high-tech products, the products are designed somewhere else, mostly in the United States. And then most of the parts, the expensive, the intricate parts, are made somewhere else. And then they're assembled in China by these young women from the villages who don't, you know, who don't cost very much and who are very reliable. And then they're shipped overseas. Um, I, if you read the analyses of China's role in the global economy, you will find that for these high-tech products, only about 10% of the purchase price stays in China. Uh, Chinese assemble so many, and they're starting from such a low base, that they do very well, and salaries aren't high. But China is not reaping the main benefits of high-tech industry. It's the designers and the, uh, the manufacturers of the most important parts. So it's the goal of the Chinese government to be able to move up the value-added chain to do the designing themselves. Um, there's no doubt that the United States has lost manufacturing jobs. On the other hand, that's not necessarily a bad thing if more and more people are gainfully employed and productively employed in service jobs. After all, um, 100 years ago, 40 or 50 percent of the American workforce was in agriculture. Now, 2 percent is in agriculture, but our agriculture is much more productive, and the 48 percent that used to be in agriculture is doing other things that add more value to the economy. So the rise of China and the rise of India and the rise of low-wage countries that get involved in manufacturing is not per se a bad thing for the United States. It's in fact a good thing. But in order to take advantage of this division of labor, American blue-collar workers or Americans who used to do blue-collar work have to find other work. And uh, they have to find, in order to, to move up economically, they have to find jobs that require higher skills, which means that they need better education, which comes back to our educational system, uh, about which I'm happy to say I am not an expert. But uh, that, so the China problem, and in some ways it is a problem, but it comes back to the American education system.